And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, we have new information on the investigation into a child death in Bangor on February 18th. Police say that child's death has now been ruled a homicide. Bangor police say on the morning of Sunday, February 18th, a 10 year old child was brought to a local hospital with life threatening injuries. The hospital notified Bangor police and DHHS. Police tell us this scene in Birch Hill Estates from February 19th is connected to their investigation. Despite life saving efforts, the child succumbed to his injuries and died. Police say the chief medical and examiner in Augusta ruled the, child, the child's death a homicide. Bangor police detectives arrested three people in connection with the child's murder. The child's father, 33 year old Joshua Smith of Bangor, the child's mother, 35 year old Jem Bean of Bangor, and the paternal grandmother, 56 year old Misty LaTourette of Bangor. All three have been charged with depraved indifference murder and transported to the Penobscot County Jail. The case remains under investigation. Well, we also now know more about a death in Waterville that caused schools to close for the day earlier this week. Police responded at around 4.30 a.m. on Monday after receiving a call reporting a man slumped over the steering wheel of a bus in the parking lot. Waterville schools remained closed that day so that the police department could conduct their investigation. The medical examiner determined that the man had died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Although police have identified the man, we've chosen to withhold his name out of respect for the privacy of the family. Fire tore through a farmhouse in Madison this morning. Madison Fire Chief Don French says crews responded to that fully involved structure fire at 13 Green Road just after 9 a.m. He says the tenants living in the building were able to get out safely and they're being assisted by the Red Cross. Crews face some challenges, though, as they work to extinguish those flames. We had a hard time getting to it, so we had an excavator come in and rip the roof off. And they, it was on posts and beams, so we had to take some of the floor up. The fire marshal's office determined the fire was accidental. Three Chinese nationals attempting to cross into the U.S. illegally have been arrested in Maine. The U.S. Border Patrol in Holton says agents noticed the Chinese nationals attempting to use the cover of darkness to gain entry in Fort Fairfield. They say a driver from New York, who is also a Chinese national already in immigration proceedings, was arrested and suspected of attempting to help with that illegal entry. You can report any suspicious activity to the Holton Sector headquarters at 532-6512, extension number 5. The Penobscot County Grand Jury has indicted a man in connection with an incident that required some Old Town residents to evacuate and had the University of Maine on high alert. In December, Old Town police were called to Martha's Way for a report of a man in crisis with a firearm. UMaine students received an alert notifying them a man with a gun had bar barricaded himself at the Regency Trailer Park and advised them to avoid the area. Police eventually took 20-year-old Rowan Lynch into custody. He was indicted for reckless conduct with a firearm. 50-year-old Jeremy Hart of Lee was also indicted on a variety of charges, including criminal threatening with a dangerous weapon, possession of a firearm by a prohibited person, and domestic violence criminal threatening. Hart is accused of creating a disturbance at a home in Lee. He was prohibited from being there because of bail conditions and a protection order. In 2008, Hart was sentenced to 12 years in prison after he pleaded guilty to killing his wife in LaGrange. In other news tonight, legislative leaders and public health advocates called out the tobacco industry today for targeting the black community with menthol cigarettes. This comes as the Maine House of Representatives is poised to take up a bill that would end the sale of flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes, in the state. During the press conference, displays were placed in the Hall of Flags, highlighting some of the stories from Maine's black communities. Jerry Edwards from South Portland shared his own personal experience, saying he is one of many who felt targeted by the tobacco industry. And there was something about the way it was perceived that put you a little bit on a pedestal amongst the smokers in the communities. It was seen somehow as more classy, is what I gathered. The black people that smoked that I knew were pretty proud to smoke menthols. Like they would say that, I smoke menthols. That was a theme. One lawmaker who is opposed to the flavored tobacco ban says this legislation could actually cause further harm to the black community. So we know that um, African-Americans and people of color are disproportionately affected by law enforcement. 
So I don't know why we would create something illegal, create an illicit market for those same folks to be engaged in criminal justice on that side. So uh, I think it's, it's, I think it's uh, the opposite of helping. And I think we need to let adults be adults. That's, that's my message today. The national NAACP supports the ban on menthol. It is offensive and repulsive for the tobacco industry and others to use our collective trauma of police brutality to uh, secure their profits in the black community. It's unfair for a person who is not black to talk about what black folks need in this country. The bill is expected to be taken up in the House within the coming weeks. Three new bills introduced by legislative Democrats aim to curb gun violence in the state in the wake of the Lewiston mass shooting. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has more on what's in those bills and the response from Republican lawmakers. This suite of legislation that we are introducing today in conjunction with the governor's proposed legislation will initiate important progress to make our state safer. The suite features three bills that would seek to implement the following changes in the state. Increase mental health crisis units. Enable the mental health crisis system to connect to 911 dispatch. Increase the number of crisis walk-in centers. Establish a main office of violence prevention. Increase the medication management services. Institute a statewide active shooter alert system. Implement a ban on bump stock-like devices. And institute a 72-hour waiting period for all firearm sales in the state. I will say at the outset that um, the lens in which we have been um, using to craft this legislation has really been through a public health um, lens. There, there has to be a way for level-headed people to come together and figure out a way that could possibly stop or make it harder for anything like this to happen again. There are some of the measures, like bump stock bans and the 72-hour waiting period, that Republicans previously defeated in prior bills. However, they did seem open to supporting more mental health services. Mass shootings are clearly a mental health issue because sane, balanced people do not perpetrate them. They just don't. The crisis receiving centers, I think that's definitely something where uh, we could get uh, behind. You know, I think, frankly, the amount of money being allocated to it is, is wholly inadequate. I think we uh, need to be doing more on that front. While these bills are in the early stages of the legislative process, Speaker Talbot Ross is hopeful that the ideas in the bills will pass with bipartisan support. It's absolutely our hope that, uh, that we will uh, be able to move forward uh, in a bipartisan manner. Um, preliminary conversations with some Republican leaders um, have uh, indicating a willingness to sit down and talk. Speaker Talbot Ross's bill will have its first public hearing on Monday. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. About two weeks ago, residents in Plymouth received a notice that the town's drinking water contained levels of PFAS that exceeded the state's safe drinking water standard. Our Grace Blanchard spoke with community members as they try to tackle this crisis. Nearly 200 people in Plymouth are without safe drinking water after recent testing revealed potentially harmful levels of PFAS. Uh, that's, that's big. It's, it's big in a small town like this. This is what's so sad about this happening is that this is a wonderful community. You know, and for us to go through this, it's very sad, frightening. A notice went out to the public highlighting the risks that can come from ingesting high levels of PFAS, leaving many on edge. Who wants to shower in that kind of water? Who wants to bathe in it? You know, and getting water outside, you know, outside water is also expensive too. So what is a family supposed to do? Over 60 families are currently relying on water that's been donated by Poland Springs. That, that is awesome. It's a relief, actually. Lorraine Farah is one of the many impacted and says it has been a nightmare. We can't cook, we can't do any, I mean, we can take showers and do laundry and do our dishes, but you know, we can't cook and we can't drink the water as of right now. According to town officials, a filtration system is being designed, but it could be months before that is ready. Farah says the fire department will continue to hand out water to those in need. You know, keep checking on their neighbors and if they see them getting low on water, you know, other than the three days a week, you know, please, you know, call somebody because we don't want anyone to go without, without clean water. In Plymouth, 
Grace Blanchard for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. The University of Maine at Augusta's Bangor campus will be installing more security cameras around the property. This comes after a shooting in the Dow parking lot on the campus on February 11th. Communications Associate Vice President Brent Wooten says UMA Bangor will be adding these cameras in various lots and buildings across the campus. He also says additional measures have been put in place, including the addition of six Jersey barriers in the Dow parking lot, requiring parking decals for certain areas of the campus and monthly meetings with members of the Bangor campus. The university says they'll continue working with the community towards solutions for dealing with the encampment bordering its Bangor campus. Maine game wardens are urging people to stay off the ice following today's storm. Rainfall has left standing water on lakes and ponds across the region, which wardens say could expand ice fishing holes left in the ice and expose rocks near the surface. Any open water that was open before obviously is going to be more open now or, or less, less safe. Those that have maybe ice shacks out should be considering caution um, when removing them. Normally this would be peppered with ice shacks still. If, if it keeps going the way it is, it's going to be a very short season. Wardens also want to remind the public to use caution even if they don't see standing water because ice in many areas is not as thick as people might think it is this time of year. A link to more information on ice safety guidelines can be found on our website, foxbangor.com. Most of our area woke up to rain and wind causing trees to blow and bend. Maine Emergency Management Agency is urging awareness and preparedness because there is more to come throughout the night. The major concern for the storm is the high winds causing power outages and then the temperatures falling dramatically overnight. For folks who lose power and don't have an alternate heating source, it's going to be an uncomfortable situation. Corson says that there will be a widespread impact from this storm. Utility crews are on standby across the state, but won't be able to climb poles if the wind is still whipping around. Warming centers are open and you can find more information on maine.gov slash MEMA. Yeah, and the wind's still whipping as we, you know, went out to take, you know, a brief break, you know, for the evening. And, yeah. you know, you drive, driving across the bridge from, you know, Bangor into Brewer, <laughs> and it's like, oh, my car's getting blown all over the place. A little uncomfortable when you're on a bridge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's funny. I walked outside. It felt like I was going to get knocked over. At <laughs> yeah. first. I was not ready for that gust, but, yeah. uh, you know, the, I think the real concern is now with temperatures uh, poised to, uh, post a plummet overnight. We get yeah. all that wetness on the ground right now that could cause some slick conditions. Yeah, the so the concerns are multifaceted as we head into the latter part of the evening. So yeah. let's go ahead and get a first check of our forecast. Thank you so much, Beth. Hope you didn't forget your umbrella today because we definitely needed it. We did see some scattered showers in the area, some pretty moderate rain in the morning hours, but overall, though, we did see some dry hours as well. Now, visibilities are still a bit low here in town. We're at five miles down by Bar Harbor. We're at five. Look at Rockland, less than a mile of visibility. So we got some thicker clouds and still some precipitation in the area. A lot of watches and advisories. Look at this. Wind advisories have been posted and some high wind warnings posted just south of town. Uh, Bar Harbor, Machias, you are in those high wind warnings. So get ready. It's going to continue to stay windy at least the next 24 hours. Hour by hour forecast does show that rain transitioning into snow after midnight as temperatures sharply fall. Beth. Thank you, Conrad. And, you know, CMP showing right now a little under 1,100, you know, customers affected by outages. So let's hope those numbers remain small or non-existent throughout the evening. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, our Doug Banks brings us the latest on a proposed consolidation of a Hamden Postal facility. And the Department of Education is hoping to add more community schools to the state of Maine. We'll explain more about what that means coming up. Maine QuitLink offers free help to stop smoking and vaping, including personalized quit plans and free patches, gum, and or lozenges with every program. Get connected to a quit coach, trained to develop a plan that works for you. Learn how to curb cravings and overcome slips and relapses. It's free, it works, and people who enroll are two times more likely to successfully quit. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW or enroll online at mainquitlink.com. 
Maine Commercial Solar offers a variety of services, including solar system design, sales, maintenance, and installation. Maine Commercial Solar can help you with existing or new systems. We offer packages for installation by others, or we can help you build your own solar array, smaller residential, or anything in between. Maine Commercial Solar is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions. We offer competitive pay, a 3% IRA match, vacation, holiday time, and a family-oriented environment. If interested, please call Jason at 848-7486. Tired of your internet service constantly letting you down? Those other providers may promise the world with their flashy advertisements, but are you truly having a good customer experience? Fear not, because there's a new player in town. Introducing GoNetSpeed. No more endless hold times or automated responses. We're here to listen, support, and provide you with the exceptional service you deserve. Our fast, reliable fiber internet, it's mind blowing. Let us show you what true internet satisfaction feels like. For the second year in a row, Chevy Equinox has been ranked by J.D. Power number one in new vehicle quality for compact SUVs. In other words, it's really good right from the start. Chevy Equinox. Do that again. Connected by OnStar. Drive yours away this President's Day weekend. Current qualified lessees can get this Equinox for around $269 a month or get $2,500 total cash allowance. Is this the start of a dynasty, a redemption tool, a breakthrough, or is this the makings of the wildest ride you'll ever witness? Any questions? Hi there, I'm Emma Smith, and coming up on Good Morning Maine, the latest events out of Augusta include a gun violence presser. Plus, we'll hear about a local food pantry who are working hard to help folks who are in need themselves. And the University of Maine at Augusta in Bangor will be installing new security measures. These stories and much more coming up on Good Morning Maine. Since late last year, a major postal facility in Hamden has been included in proposed plans for consolidation. Ahead of tomorrow's public meeting, our Doug Banks sat down with one local union president to understand what this potential move could mean for the area. As part of the USPS's Delivering for America plan, the Eastern Maine Processing and Distribution Center in Hamden could be repurposed as a local processing facility With fewer capabilities, it would no longer process local mail, affecting delivery times and employees. They maintain that there'll be no uh, career employee layoffs, uh, which I'm sure is accurate because our collective bargaining agreement doesn't allow for that. However, it does allow for reassignment. Right now, if you were to send a letter from one side of Bangor to the other, it first has to go through Hamden to be processed and postmarked. If the consolidation happens, the letter would be sent two hours south to Scarborough for processing before being sent north again for delivery. Those who rely on the Postal Service for medication, absentee ballots, and other time-sensitive items could see notable delays. Anything that's uh, time-sensitive in nature, it'll have a, a, an effect on it. These consolidations seem to degrade the service end of it instead of maintain or increase the service end. One of Peraki's main concerns is the impact it could have on local post offices. Those offices have a designated level and as employees uh, are pulled out of those offices, carriers, and utilized out of the plant, that is going to downgrade those other post offices. On Thursday, a public input meeting will be held at Jeff's Catering in Brewer starting at 4 o'clock in Bangor. Doug Banks, ABC 7, and Fox 22 News. Maine's community schools put an emphasis on taking student support beyond the classroom, and the Department of Education is hoping to add more of these schools across the state. Our David Ledford explains. The Maine Department of Education is offering funding to expand the state's community schools, which provide a variety of resources for both students and families, in addition to academic learning. At a community school, staff can quickly direct students to food pantries, health care, and more. It requires a fundamental shift in thinking about how to deliver public education in a way that addresses the whole child. Food, books, clothing, and diapers, and other necessities, all to prioritize the well-being of students and families. The school transforms into a community hub. Maine currently has community schools in Old Town, New Sharon, and Portland. The funding allows the department to develop up to five more. 
Department of Education representatives say any public elementary or secondary school can become a community school, and the resources they provide can help families address issues like absenteeism. If students are coming to school hungry or dealing with stress or lacking adequate mental or physical health needs, it just makes it that much harder to focus on learning. Well, community schools are organized in a way to address those barriers. Families interested in helping their school become a community school can visit our website, foxbangor.com, to learn more. Schools have until March 15th to apply. In Bangor, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. And coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, the Supreme Court has agreed to hear Trump, former President Trump's claims of presidential immunity. And older Americans are being strongly encouraged to get a second COVID booster shot. Those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 comes right back. PDQ Door presents CHI Doors. CHI Doors are tough, dependable, engineered for fit and function. CHI Doors from PDQ Door, Hamden, Brockport, Bath, Waterville, Holton, Presque Isle, and PDQDoor.com. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo, there's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories. We'll handle the rest. ABC 7, Fox 22, CTI Service Center, and Graham's Five and Dine want to send you to see the professional bull riders performing March 8 through 10 at the Cross Insurance Center in Bangor. Register to win two tickets by stopping by CTI Service Center in Milford and Old Town, providing outstanding heavy duty and automotive repair. Or Graham's Five and Dime in Newport. Our new med store opens February 29th, right next door. Professional bull riders, an exciting show for the entire family. What do we got? Porter. A lot of cats. How many cats? I don't know, man, like 400. What do you ladies want to watch? Why are there pool noodles on the goat? <laughs> it's a 100-year-old tortoise, born in the 1920s. This guy was probably pretty racist back then. Let's get these trash pandas in the truck, everyone. Uh, they get into the AC duct and hit the bar. All these guys 21? The Animal Control season premiere, Wednesday, March 6th on Fox. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. You're watching Fox 22 Bangor. Late this afternoon, the Supreme Court agreed to hear Donald Trump's claims of presidential immunity, putting, on, putting one of his federal criminal cases on hold right in the middle of election season. Fox's Caroline Shively reports from Washington. Former President Trump scored a legal win Wednesday, at least a temporary one, stalling the election subversion case against him. The Supreme Court agreed to take up Mr. Trump's claims he can't be prosecuted for allegedly trying to overturn the 2020 election because of presidential immunity. Oral arguments are set for April. It will affect presidents on down through the century. A ruling will likely come in late June, potentially pushing a trial originally scheduled for March until after the November election. Timing-wise, that's exactly what Trump lawyers had been hoping for. The real victory here for Trump, it deals with the calendar. You know, the, the overriding push of Smith, the special counsel, has been to get a trial before the election. He's running out a runway. Just after the announcement, Trump posted that without immunity, a president could be paralyzed by the prospect of wrongful prosecution and retaliation. He spoke about it earlier this month. You cannot allow a president to be out there without immunity. They don't have immunity. 
you don't have a presidency. Also breaking Wednesday, a state judge banned Trump from appearing on the presidential primary ballot in Illinois for his role in the January 6th riots. But that ruling is delayed from taking effect until the Supreme Court makes a decision in a similar case coming out of Colorado. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. A New York judge says he won't halt the collection of former President Trump's $454 million civil fraud penalty as Trump tries to appeal it. Appellate Judge Anil Singh ruling that Trump needs to post a bond covering the full amount. Trump's team had tried to post a $100 million bond instead. However, Singh is allowing Trump to pause a three-year ban imposed on him seeking loans from banks in New York, which could help him secure the bond. In total, Trump and his co-defendants owe more than $465 million to the state with a March 25th deadline to secure a stay. Americans 65 and older are now being encouraged to get a second COVID-19 booster dose. The recommendation by the CDC even applies to seniors who already got an updated shot in the fall. Fox's Matt Finn has the story. Over time, uh, uh, immunity drops in all individuals. Concerns over vaccine trigger defenses fading over time, prompting a CDC advisory panel to recommend seniors 65 and older get a second COVID-19 booster shot. This new spring dose would be the same shot given last year, targeting the original COVID variant and newer subvariants. Older individuals are at higher risk of morbidity and mortality or more severe consequences of COVID. While signing off on the advice, CDC Director Dr. Mandy Cohen noted most COVID-19 deaths and hospitalizations last year were among seniors. Cohen writing in a statement, quote, an additional vaccine dose can provide added protection that may have decreased over time for those at highest risk. The decision comes after a lengthy debate by an advisory panel well aware most Americans have not listened to previous recommendations. According to CDC data, an estimated 22% of U.S. adults have gotten an updated COVID vaccine booster. That number goes up to nearly 42% in the 65 and older bracket. There is definitely an element in America of vaccine fatigue. They just feel like uh, they've had a lot of vaccines and they're, they're sort of getting tired of the process. This new booster can be given to seniors four months after getting their first one. In Los Angeles, Matt Finn, Fox News. Senate lawmakers look to address the record number of Americans reaching retirement age and the concerning amount of them who are unprepared for it. Fox's Jerry Willis has more from New York. The Senate Health Committee, Health, Education, Labor and Pensions, holding a hearing to address what they call a retirement crisis. Lawmakers are warning that it could have devastating economic consequences. The solution, according to Bernie Sanders, who is chair of the HELP Committee, is for companies to offer old-fashioned pension plans. But companies have been moving away from pensions for decades. Just 15 percent of private industry workers are covered by pensions. Among companies that offer retirement plans, most are 401ks, which require workers to contribute. Pensions typically don't have that requirement. Listen. The last thing that Americans need is for lawmakers to try to put more of their retirement savings into accounts that they neither own nor control and which are managed by groups of people who've repeatedly put their own personal incentives above workers and retirees' well-being. Those without savings planning to rely on Social Security, but that won't likely cover their living costs. The average monthly Social Security check is 1800 bucks, while the average 65-plus household spends more than $4,000 per month. And 401ks do work for people who save. The number of 401k millionaires is in striking distance of an all-time high. Fidelity reporting the number of seven-figure 401k accounts it administers jumped 20 percent in 2023's final quarter to 422,000. In New York, Jerry Willis, Fox Business. Well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, half a million acres of land have been burned in a massive wildfire in Texas. And the Orono boys are looking for their second straight title. State title will be right back. Caitlin Clark looks to take down the NCAA all-time scoring record against second-ranked Ohio State Sunday on Fox. I got hurt by a big truck. Why did I call the twos? 
because life-changing injuries deserve life-changing money, and I'll fight to get it for you. We got a client who broke multiple bones in a commercial vehicle accident, $700,000. Another client had a brain injury, and we got them $1.15 million. If you get hurt by a big truck, call the two. We win for you. Hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. This spring is the perfect time to get away with a great deal on your favorite Hyundai model. All backed by America's best warranty, plus three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Add more joy to your journey at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Get in and get away now before these deals are gone. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month or get 0% APR or up to 1500 bonus cash. Hurry, offers end 229 Come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. CEM DP Porter Contractors has been in business for over 40 years in the Bangor area. We specialize in commercial, medical, and residential design build construction, as well as building maintenance and renovations. CEM DP Porter Contractors is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions, including carpenters and a project manager superintendent. We offer vacation, holidays, a 3% IRA match, competitive pay, and a family-oriented environment. If interested in applying, please contact Jason at 848-7486. I'm glad I got my colonoscopy when I did, right at age 50, because they found a large tumor. I had absolutely no symptoms beforehand. If you're 50 or older, ask your provider about screening for colon cancer. Today, you have options for colon cancer screening. I'm celebrating six years cancer-free and thankful for every minute of it. Did you know that it's possible to prevent colorectal cancer with regular screening? Learn more at ScreenMaine.org. Well, if you're thinking about planning a vacation, you may need to set aside more money than you might think. Fox's Kelly Saberi tells us what's leading to higher prices throughout the hospitality industry. The Sable Hotel is located on Lake Michigan and it boasts a beautiful view of the Chicago skyline. Now, while people set out to travel in the coming weeks and throughout this coming summer, they'll notice that prices are higher and that's due to a labor shortage in the hospitality industry. Hotels will pay $123 billion in compensation this year, up more than 20% from 2019. That's according to the American Hotel and Lodging Association. As Maverick Hospitality CEO Robert Habib tells me, the industry requires different demands than labor in other sectors. That's because hotels are open 24-7. When the pandemic struck, many hotel workers found jobs in industries that allowed them to work more traditional 9 to 5 gigs on a Monday to Friday basis. When the doors opened to many hotels after the pandemic, a lot of hospitality workers decided not to come back into the business because their new jobs were just so enticing. 70% of respondents to one Deloitte survey said they decided not to bring back certain amenities and services at all, and that includes in-room dining. In the immediate aftermath of the pandemic, we saw that people were very forgiving of being short-staffed and slow service and so on. That's all gone to the wind. Consumers expect great service. Habib tells me he's going to see another 10% increase in labor wages this year, and that's on top of what was already a 20% increase. In Chicago, Kelly Saberi, Fox Business. Meanwhile, multiple wildfires are burning through rural towns across the Texas panhandle. Since breaking out on Monday, flames have burned half a million acres. Fox's Casey Stiegel has more. The second largest wildfire in Texas history spreading across the state's panhandle on Wednesday. The Smokehouse Creek Fire growing to more than 500,000 acres, forcing mandatory evacuations and extending its reach into Oklahoma. 
Texas A&M Forest Service says warm temperatures and strong winds have fueled the flames since they ignited on Monday. Fire conditions are expected to return on Friday, but for now, crews are hoping to take advantage of cooler weather. A lot of significant activity, impactful activity up in the Texas Panhandle. Um, with our conditions moderating um, a little bit today, we're hopeful that our firefighters are going to be able to make progress in containing these wildfires. Smokehouse Creek is one of several fires burning throughout the panhandle this week. At one point Wednesday, more than 10,000 people were without power due to the flames. Wildfires have been scorching rural towns, leaving behind piles of rubble where homes and buildings once stood. Local officials say they are assessing the damage and working to relocate residents who lost their properties. They're trying to bring crews in and get basically scouting to see what level of infrastructure is damaged and then assess the most rapid way to restore that infrastructure. Governor Abbott has issued a disaster declaration for at least 60 counties. That's the latest from Dallas. Casey Stiegel, Fox News. Those images is absolutely shocking. Giant thick clouds, or they look like clouds rolling right. across the panhandle, and it was just, just thick, thick smoke. Yeah, really, I mean, crazy to think about just the scope of those fires yeah. and how many counties are affected. We know how big Texas is, so to hear 60 counties I was going to say, total, you hear Casey Stiegel say something like that, and it's just, my gosh, dozens and dozens of counties. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. All right, well, when we come back, we'll have the details in our local forecast. Yeah, stay with us. Don't forget those umbrellas, because we will definitely need them. But tomorrow, though, we might want to bring out those brooms, because we're going to get some snow on the back end. How much? are we going to get? I'll have the answers and more coming up. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Toyota trains certified technicians. Is that important? Well, you wouldn't hire just anyone to help you move, would you? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. Mm. Not again. Get your Toyota ready for the year's coldest and harshest weather. See your New England Toyota dealer for great service offers to help keep your Toyota dependable and fuel efficient all winter long. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Here's this week's featured deal. The Maniac Snack Shack. You will find delicious, tasty, insane desserts. Oh, and wait, there is more. We offer breakfast, lunch, and dinner options for take home. You want something special? Let us know and we'll create that perfect treat for any occasion. The Maniac Snack Shack. Place your order today. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m. A limited supply available half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. There was a kidnapping today. 28 people. The city bus just disappeared. There's kids on the bus. Don't make me shoot you. Cutting corners, going rogue. It's a problem. Put out the alert. We're running out of time. Please just find my kid. No! We will get them back. Every single one of them. You haven't fun yet? They changed everything. Alert season premiere this Tuesday on Fox. She's got a sick kid, a dead husband. She's desperate. Desperate people become liabilities. The Cleaning Lady, season premiere this Tuesday on Fox. And just like that, we are back. It's Wednesday. Our main weather today is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studio, Penobscot Plaza in Bangor, providing custom ink by licensed artists for over... 20 years, you guessed it. Big low pressure system in the area, stretching all the way from the southern states, Raleigh, all up the eastern seaboard. Of course, here in town, we are looking at some rain. For now, 
but that will be changing into some snow in the next several hours. For now, though, we are looking at those lighter showers in the region. Nothing heavy for now, but overnight tonight, we will continue to see that moderate band starting to roll in. And then as temperatures cool, we're going to see that snow on the back end. Not going to be a long lasting event at all. Looks like we're maybe going to be in the snow for two to three hours in our area as temperatures continue to fall. Accumulations, though, will be very, very minimal, especially here in town and right by the coast because just temperatures will be above freezing. And then by the time they go below freezing, the snow will be moving out of the area. And by the way, before that, everything will be wet and it will freeze just like that. So please be careful and slow down by tomorrow morning. Generally, though, we're looking at less than an inch of snow here in town, right by the coast as well. You got to go up north, Millinocket area, Greenville, maybe getting an inch of snow. But as temperatures, you know, of course, they were in the 40s and 50s today. They are just not cooperating with us. It is very windy, though, here in town. 22 mile per hour sustained winds right by the coast. Bar Harbor's at 29 and stretching right into uh, Machias. 24 mile per hour sustained winds with wind gusts closer to 40. It's going to continue to stay very windy overnight tonight and then throughout the day tomorrow. We're still looking at wind gusts anywhere around 35 to even 40 miles per hour. High temperatures though. Look at this. I'm scratching my head. Is it February or is it April or May? 50 degrees earlier today right by the coast. 50 degrees in Bar Harbor. Rockland was at uh, 48 degrees up north. Greenville, you still have a thick snowpack, but 45 degrees, so we melted a lot of that snow away, especially with the rain as well. For tonight, though, sharp cold front rolling in. Temperatures are going to be at 18 degrees. Rain changing over to snow, generally less than an inch of snow. Gusty winds, though. Look at that southwest wind gusting around even 40 miles per hour, so that 18 degrees, it's going to feel like we're closer to zero. For tomorrow, though, temperatures around 22, so we are well below average. Mainly sunny skies, though, and windy conditions as well. So it's just going to feel like we are back at around 10 degrees throughout the day on Thursday. Our extended forecast outlook does get much, much better. Look at this. Near freezing on Friday and then right back up into the 40s and your record highs once again by the weekend. Continuing to stay warm by beginning of next week with more chances of rain. Beth? So Thursday into Friday is like this little island of frigidness and then the rest of the week is and we're back to you know yeah. mild spring temperatures exactly and like warmer temperatures than we really are used to this year i feel yeah. like you know if we had a, a week that was all in the 20s and 30s we wouldn't be blinking an eye but right you know with the the fluctuations we've been having it just feels a little weird yeah it's a little jarring for yeah. sure not great for the allergies yeah, all right that's true. <laughs> well, sports is coming up next stay with us Raoul's Garage has been serving customers in the greater Dover Foxcroft region since 1946. Our goal is not just selling you a vehicle, but also giving you quality service to maintain your vehicle at peak performance. Browse our inventory online or in person. Whether it's a car, truck, or SUV, we can put you in the vehicle that is right for you. Sales, service, and parts. Raoul's Garage, doing business the right way every day. Great Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to battery power, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hanks Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. Little Miss Davis Sweets and Treats, a home-based business that specializes in homemade baked goods. I bake everything from mini cupcakes and cakes, including my giant cookies, 
cupcakes, and large gingerbread men. I also specialize in baking homemade fudge and brownies too. Everything I bake is made to order, so I do kindly ask for at least a seven day pickup notice when placing your order. Little Miss Davis Sweets and Treats. Tonight's sports is brought to you by the KG. Stop in for hunting and fishing supplies, apparel, and homemade food. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start on the hardwood up in Orono. Maine women's basketball is currently number two in America East ahead of their two final regular season games Thursday and Saturday at the pit. It starts Thursday against Binghamton, a team Maine hasn't lost to in nine games but always seems to give them a battle. Then on Saturday, a showdown against America East's top team, Albany potentially for the number one seed in the conference tournament. A perfect test to prepare them for the tourney. The team isn't thinking about changing anything that's gotten them this far. We're just um, taking care of ourselves, focusing on what we need to do to get better, and I think we have. It's just going to be defense and taking what they give us and just staying composed and staying within the moment. Just really taking it at a time, making sure we come out strong in the, in the first half. Don't try to get them too many open looks, and then if we stick to the game plan, we'll be in good shape. If the Black Bears win out, they clinch home court advantage throughout the America East Tournament. They haven't lost a conference game in the pit this year yet, and having a possible five more games there in front of some of America East's best fans is just another driving force heading into the final stretch. We have the best fans in the in the conference easily. The amount of support that we have here, the intensity here, this environment, it's like no other place in our conference. We're playing here in the pit with our fans, it's a great advantage to us. And so um, it's a really big motivation. Um, and we have to win on Thursday for that, you know, to even be a possibility. Should be a great couple of games. Let's keep it on the hardwood. We are now under 48 hours away from tip off of the Class B state championships at the Cross Center on Friday. And when the Orono Red Riots take the court, the boys will be looking for their second straight gold ball. For the, for the second straight year two, the Riots will take on Oceanside for the state championship. Last year, Orono taking a close 61-58 victory in a really good game. There's been a lot of conversation about Oceanside this year, and a lot of it centers around their offense. The Mariners are led by the Galley Twins, who both score over 20 points a game, and the team themselves nearly put up 90 points a game. So, the Riots know slowing down that attack is their top priority. They're coming out with the same, if not more, intensity, and we know they're going to be hungry, especially coming up, coming up after last year's loss. It's going to be a defensive game for sure, and whoever comes out and prides himself on defense for the full 32 minutes is going to come out with the W. The Galley brothers are obviously very tough, and so is Zeb Foster, so we're going to have our hands full on defense, but uh, that's what our, that's what our uh, drive has been the whole season. I think looking forward to these guys has been getting our defense ready to go. So. It's been a great last few years for the Orono boys. They brought home two regional titles and a state championship with football, plus last year's championship run with basketball, and this year's trip to the gold ball game. And they credit that success to a winning attitude all throughout the building. We have a group of winners and we're all super competitive. We get after each other in practice, on the field, and it comes out to help us in the long run. Everybody just loves to win here. Um, we always go hard, we grind. Um, as, we, as we go at each other in practice all the time, competitive nature is, is great. I think that if you have a team that's not competitive with each other in practice, you're not going to succeed as much. Should be a fantastic one at the Cross Center. Now let's stay in Orono, move over to UMaine. Black Bear, Black Bear women's hockey hosting a Hockey East tournament play-in game Wednesday night. Eight seed Maine going up against the nine seed Merrimack. The Black Bears 0-2-1 against the Warriors this season. They'll start things off in the first period, no score. Maine's Ida Coppola takes a shot. It's saved by Callie Hogarth and Haley Chang swats away Coppola's centering attempt. Second period now, Merrimack's Alex Ferguson Passes it back to Solveig Gisler, and her ripper is glove saved by Jordan Madison. Later, Maine on the power play. Sarah Morrison taps a loose puck to a charging Coppola, and she scores her 25th goal of the year. Black Bears up 1-0. Third period now, Merrimack power play. Chang over to Celine to Denby. The charge, the shot, and the goal to knock things up at 1. The game goes to overtime with the Warriors' Allison Reeb cashing in there. 2-1, Merrimack wins, and they move on. 
And finally, let's go to Husson University. Husson men's basketball will take on the take on NYU in the NCAA tournament. And this last dance for the Eagles marks the end of a few great careers. Husson has four seniors, all from Maine. Mount Ararat's Jared Balzer, MDI's Derek Collin, Bangor's Luke Caruso, and, so and South Portland's Scott Lewis. These four have brought two banners to Newman Gymnasium, winning the NAC title back in 2022 and this past weekend. And they all say these last four years have been an awesome ride, and going out on top is a great way to end their careers with Husson. Uh, it's been like pretty up and down, but like you got to take the, the good with the bad. This year's been like a pretty special year to go out on because it's like a brotherhood and I just love these guys. It means a lot, yeah. It's like my senior year. Um, the last time we won, I didn't play. I was injured. So just being able to play and being, being able to be a part of uh, our championship uh, just meant it was huge. It was in, I can't describe the feeling. It was amazing. You know, a lot of us have been part of the program for numerous years, so and we have a lot of young guys. So it was really fun seeing, uh, especially the young guys get their first championship, and for us older guys to win the second one. So it was it was a great feeling. It's been great. I feel like I've you know made some brothers for life for sure with the team, and it's it's been amazing. It's been great. You know, one thing about our seniors is that we're all main guys. So uh, with that perspective, you know, we've all kind of like grown together, and I think we gave a good effort so far and hopefully we can make some history and get a win here in the NCAAs. Wishing them the best of luck down in the Big Apple. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. The hot, crispy filet of fish with soft steamed buns, tender, flaky fish, melty cheese, and tangy tartar sauce. You either love it or you haven't tried it yet. Now at McDonald's, order a crispy, delicious filet of fish, a tender, juicy McCrispy or spicy McCrispy, two for only six dollars. Toyota trains certified technicians. Is that important? Well, you wouldn't hire just anyone to help you move, would you? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. Mm. Not again. Get your Toyota ready for the year's coldest and harshest weather. See your New England Toyota dealer for great service offers to help keep your Toyota dependable and fuel efficient all winter long. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. Are your basement walls bowing, crumbling, or failing? Hi, I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems. All things basementy. Our stable lock wall system offers a patented, affordable, and permanent solution to save your foundation walls. It stabilizes, fills voids, and structurally repairs, leaving a new smooth surface. All the strength of new walls. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basementy. 25 words or less. What advice do you have for John? Have fun. This is one of the best games on TV. In a friendly game of words. 11 words. Oh, you just came to slay. Oh. <laughs> the key to victory. Stifler's mom. Oh, Jennifer no. Coolidge? Cougar. Cougar, oh, yeah. He's clearly in the clues. Wave, light, pebble. Rebel. You did it. You did it. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Hello, Crapopolis! From creator Dan Harmon comes TV's number one new comedy. How did I live without this? Crapopolis, all new, Sundays on Fox. The pandemic unfortunately closed some businesses and organizations for good, but one local organization actually used the time to renovate in the hopes of furthering their mission. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the story. Home Inc.'s soup kitchen program has been a vital part of the Orland community for years. But then the pandemic hit. 
forcing the organization to close the kitchen for four years. Now, a place that many call home is back open, serving up food and smiles at new and returning guests. It's something that to me was always very special about home, how we could bring people here. It was a space to break down barriers and bring people together to talk and to, to be in community with each other. Since the soup kitchens closed four years ago, they've renovated the dining room and the kitchen. The workers we spoke to say they're excited to see the soup kitchen up and running, serving the public again. Wonderful. Um, I think it's what we need. I think it's, it's good for the community. Moore says they've seen a sharp increase in need. But there's an 82% increase in people accessing our uh, food distribution line. So that's, that's significant and something that um, this food line, this soup kitchen is hoping to address with, um, with our programming. At the end of the day, Moore hopes this could be a safe space for people to ask for help when needed. My hope is that this can be a space again where people can be together, where we can talk about our needs and staff can work with people who need help and have a um, really low barrier way to talk about what is um, what can help people get to where they need to be. In Orland, Matthew Jaronsic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A small town robotics team shocked the world last year and they're dialed in to do it again. Our Devin Dagnalt reports. Going into the competition, what are you worried about? What are you excited about? I'm excited to see how this robot stacks up against all the other good teams that are going at the competition and I'm excited to hopefully see us do well this year. The Bucksport High School robotics team, Bucks Wrath, and their robot shock made headlines last year when they ranked third at the International First Robotics Competition, and they've set their sights just as high this year with their new bot dial. We're really crossing our fingers and looking forward to this year and seeing if we can live up to what we did last year. They want to go farther, and uh, we're behind them, and we'll see what happens. Team 6329 is set to embark on their first competition of the season this Thursday, but with limited equipment available for practicing, it's hard to predict what will happen. We've only been able to have two robots out here, one playing defense, one playing offense, so it's, it's hard to really see the game until you actually get to play it. Despite the uncertainty, driver Braden Gray is confident he and his team are ready to adapt if need be. We have to go into every match with whatever we got. Even if it broke the match before and we weren't able to fix it, we just got to make it work. Well, no matter what happens this season, nothing can take away what this team from a small town in Maine has already accomplished. I don't know if these guys really know just how crazy it is, how well they did. Um, there are lots of teams that go their whole careers, 20 plus years, and never get to get to that level. We'll keep you updated as Team 6329 goes through their season. In Bucksport, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And finally tonight, a gray seal pup that was found at Reed State Park in Georgetown in January is going home. The pup found the pup was found underweight and wandering a quarter mile from shore in the woods. The pup was recovered and cared for by marine mammals of Maine. She has since nearly doubled in size, learned how to eat fish and has become a strong and healthy seal. Today, she went back to where she belongs, released back into the wild at a beach in Phippsburg, I am in love. That is one of the cutest things I have ever seen. And so happy to hear that she is back home in the water. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it just is amazing to see an animal reunited with, you know, where it's supposed to be. It's oh, home. And it's magical. It's it, absolutely magical. Oh, and there she is. It is. And, and hats off and all the credit goes to... Marine Mammals of Maine. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what fantastic work. Yeah, I mean... Talk about a dream job. Seriously. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, you can sign us up. If you need any volunteers, we're right here. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us from everybody here at Fox 22 News. Take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone.